You must remember this A kiss is just a kiss A sigh is just a sigh The fundamental things apply As time goes by And when two lovers woo They still say I love you On that you can rely Llévame donde nací A tu lado quiero estar No hay un sitio para mí Como mi buen Gibraltar Solo donde vi la luz Tengo puesta mi The evacuation was not to be the end of us. It was to be the making of us. The birth of the Gibraltarian. Y así es como nací yo, la más chica de cinco hermanos. Y Mary y mi hermana Carmen me hicieron de partera. Ya, ya, ya. You've told me the story loads of times, but I'll never get tired of hearing it. And Yeyo, Yeyo was at the bar, ¿no? And when he came home, no vea lo que le esperaba. Sí, el pobre. Porque en aquellos tiempos no era como ahora. Ahora los padres van y hasta cortan el umbilical cord y todo. Pero entonces... Ni entraban a ver el parto siquiera. Qué vergüenza. Yeah, yeah. That's a real small piece. But ah. you also gonna keep it. 
Because you've got lots of boiling, lots of um, boil in the kitchen drawer. And that little piece of bread, no one's going to eat it. Mira, it's what the war taught me. A no desperdicia nada. Así que... Oh, man! Qué calor! <laughs> Mira! Qué bien están los dos aquí fresquitos, eh? Anda! Anda, Rob, trae un vasito de agua, rey. Que venga asadita. Mira, mam. Mira. Que te he traído para que te pruebes y no para descambiarlo. Para el ceremony. Mira cómo vengo, cargadita. Mira. Mira. Mira qué mono. Sí, ¿Eh? Mira. ¿Y este qué? Este me gusta. ¿Eh? Este es buenísimo. ¿Te gusta? Sí, sí, este me gusta. Este es buenísimo. Sí. ¿Y cuál era el dress code? Que no me acuerdo. Eh, Robert, ve a la sala, encima del aparador está la invitation. A ver lo que dice. Que no me acuerdo yo del dress code. Mira, y Carmencita recibió la invitation. Carmencita no la ha recibido todavía. Okay. La po... Mira que se le han dicho a todos los vacuís que tienen que ir a los archives al convento para registrarse en el website. Ah. Porque si no, no en no puede mandar las invitaciones. Mañana mismo estoy yo llamando a Jerry, a Owen o a Anthony para ver si todavía se puede apuntar porque esta mujer todo lo deja para última hora y hay un deadline. Sí, que es verdad. Sí, claro. Y yeah, ya, yeah. aquí está. The Chief Minister, the Honorable Ethel Picardo, QC, MP, requests the pleasure of the company of Mrs. Vicky Pitaluga, Friday, 22nd of May, 6 p.m., Casement Square. Commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the evacuation. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Aquí pone el lounge suit. ¿Es okay? Casual? No. Es un poquito más formal. Para los hombres, it's a dark business suit. Y para las mujeres, un trajecito de cóctel, a lo mejor con una chaquetita o algo. Ajá, pues entonces esta. Porque esta es la más mona. Sí, ¿Eh? sí, que es verdad. Esta, esta es muy mona, sí, me gusta. ¿Por qué no te lo pruebas? Bueno, ahora no. Lo probaré después. Mira, es para mayo. El ceremony es mayo. Pero es que no sé si va a ser calor. Y después dicen, en mayo, hasta mayo no te quita el sal. Pues vamos a ver. What about a scarf? La bufanda. Está loca. Ay, mujer, una bufanda no. Una cosa de esa... Ay, ¿cómo le dicen? Como un sol, un pashmina. Ah, bueno. Hola familia. Hola. Hola ay, quién está aquí. Ay, quién está aquí. Ay, ay. Lo más bonito de la casa. Ay, qué cosa más bonita, hijo. Qué guapo Hola. eres, oído. Te ha traído, te trae. Ay, 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 mi pudín. Ay, 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 mi pudín. Mira, ¿qué trae Carmen? Mira lo que os traigo, un pudín de pan. Oh. Eh, mira, Vicky, tenía unos cuantos hoyos que se me estaban estropeando. Con que ni lo voy a hacerlo. No vea la pinta mira, que tiene mira, esto, chiquilla. Mira, fíjate, mira. Como te sale el pudín de pan a ti, que no le sale a nadie, ¿eh? Madre. El mejor pudín de pan de Toy y Broncha. Mira, tal como me enseñó mi madre. Además, la receta es la misma. Pero sí, que, 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 que un pedacito. Sí, sí, claro. ¿Eh? Claro. Aunque me parece que llego tarde, ¿no? Ya habéis comido. Ellos dos sí, pero yo no. Hoy yo me voy a cortar un pedacito. Anda, ve, ve. Anda. Pues mira, corta un pedacito para mí también, Sonia. Y había un trocito chiquitito. A probarlo. ¿Y tú, Robert? ¿Quieres un pedacito, Rey? Hola. No, mom, it's got bread and I'm doing a protein diet. Ah. ¿Otra vez esta dieta? Anda, niño, pero si tú no estás gordo, chiquillo. Además, a tu edad puede comer de todo. La tonto, y aprovechate. Carmen, que estoy muy gordo y no se me ve el six-pack. ¡Ay! Con nosotros nos lo comemos todo. Vamos, como no pasamos hambre durante la guerra. Oh. ¿Te acuerdas, Vicky? Y esta juventud no sabe lo que es pasar hambre. Yo... Y ahora se ponen a dieta. No te digo yo nada, nada. Na. Yo lo que más me acuerdo de Londres era el hambre que siempre teníamos. Oh, verdad, pero hambre. Todo nos parecía poco. Todo, todo. Y cogíamos, nos íbamos de un coffee place a otro coffee Uy, place acuerdas? a otro coffee place porque ahí nos daban el cup of tea con un platito de prena en bacha. Digo, y, ya. Ya. y después por las tardes tu madre nos daba dinero para irnos al Black Market para ver lo que Digo. podríamos conseguir. Digo. Hoy Vicky, ¿te acuerdas ya de los huevos? <risa> Eso fue no mamá. Mira, 
tu abuela se puso en cola y cuando llegó su turno, el hombre le dijo que nada más que le podía dar cuatro huevos. Y ella va y le dice, pero si es que somos siete, ¿no me puede dar tres huevos más? Hombre, el hombre por supuesto le dijo que no. Con que ella, muy avispada y muy lista que era, se quitó la chaqueta, se quitó el gorro y se puso en cola otra vez. Y cuando llega adelante, le pide los huevos al hombre. Bueno, en el buen sentido de la palabra. Con que el hombre no la reconoció y le da los huevos. Y a esa noche nos comimos un huevo frito cada uno oh. que nos supa gloria. Sí, que es verdad. But don't you have Russian books? El catering de los hoteles lo tenía Lions, que tenía nuestro Russian car. Claro, si no comía lo que te ponía en la mesa, no había manera de comprar nada. ¿Verdad, Vicky? Sí, tan... Claro, ellos, ellos tenían nuestro Russian car y nosotros, claro, no podíamos decir vamos a comprar, vamos a más de lo otro. Pero claro, cuando nosotros ya nos, 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 fuimos, al flat. nos fuimos al flat y mi madre te llamó a la cocina, entonces mi madre, la pobre, hacía milagro, milagro, con lo poquito que teníamos. Era una cocinera estupenda. Sí, que es verdad. Sí, que es verdad. Anda, y mam, cuéntale del paquete que te mandó tu padre de Gibraltar. Oh, mi padre, el pobre, como mi madre siempre en todas las cartas le decía que aquí no había ajo, que te, 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 te quería ajo, bueno, pues un día le preparó una caja para mandar cositas de comida. Al cabo de un mes y pico apareció la caja. Oh, todo loco con la caja. Bueno, vamos a esperar que esté toda la familia, todo puesto ahí. Llegó el momento de abrir la caja. Mira, abrimos la caja y no te digo el bofetón de ajo. Oh. Todavía lo bueno, todavía lo bueno. Oh. Bueno, pero en la caja había más cosas. Mira, había plátanos. Estaban negros, más tropeados los pobres, pero los sacamos. No lo comimos aunque sabían ajo. Pero allí, allí no se tiraba nada. Nos comimos los plátanos. La cáscara y todo. No, la cáscara no. <risa> bueno, pues después había, en el fondo había unas barras de, de chocolate Cadbury's. ¿Te acuerdas? Oh, qué pinta. Pero el chocolate sabía ajo también. <risa> Con que lo pusimos fuera de la ventana en el pollete, que había nieve, cerramos la ventana con una penita y ahí lo dejamos toda la noche. Y luego por la mañana, lo cogimos y lo probamos. Sabía un poquito ajo, pero mira. Estaba buenísimo. En ese momento era el mejor chocolate del mundo, no lo comimos. Digo, exacto. Hoy qué mal, ¿no? Oh, 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 no, sé, no, no, no sé. Pero mira, una idea nueva para Cadbury's. Garlic flavored chocolate. Oh. Oh. Oh, las cosas. ¿Te has comprado, Vicky? Mira, mira. ¿Te has comprado? No, me, me la ha traído a vista. A ver si ah, me gusta ¿sí? algo para pa ceremony. Ah, pues mira, mira. Eh. Son Hoy, oh, Vicky. Este es monísimo, vamos. Sí. Vamos. The Beast Pie de Watermelon. Ese me gusta, sí. Oh, qué mono, qué elegante va ahí. Ese es muy mono. Qué elegante va ahí. A ver. Hoy, oh, Vicky, esta blusa no me gusta nada. Una calidad muy mala, ¿eh? Igualito, igualito que en nuestros días, ¿eh? ¿Te acuerdas? Anda, barato, pero bueno. Sabíamos entonces lo que podíamos comprar, ¿eh? Este me gusta, este sí. Vicky, ¿sabes lo que me está acordando? ¿Te acuerdas el día que apareció Peter Lynch con todas las telas enfrente de la, de la tienda de tu padre? Bueno, eso fue...
Uh, linens, linens, pure Irish linens, Manchester cotton, uh, Nottingham lace, linens, linens, pure Irish linens, Manchester cotton, Nottingham lace, linens, linens, pure Irish linens, uh, Manchester cotton, Nottingham lace. Hey, you cannot sell those things here. Oh, says who? This is how we do it back in England. There's no law that forbids it, and Gibraltar's British, ain't it? So, so the same laws must apply. Tendrá cara de inglés, que viene aquí saca dueño de todo. Well, you can take your Irish linens and your Manchester mierda and your Nottingham trappers back to Robin Hood. This is my dad's shop, and you're standing right in front of it. So get out of here and go back to your country. Hey, hands off! Oh, that's good quality stuff. What about French and Dutch rubbish you sell around here? Yes, it's English, but where did it come from? French and Dutch? But from what century are you? It looks like you know nothing about the changes to our trading business. And uh, walk a bit further down Main Street and you will come across what we call Bombay Street is packed with 26 Indian shops selling silks and all kinds of embroidered cottons. And you will soon know what competition you're up against. Pedazo de tonto. Bueno, bueno, ¿qué pasa aquí? ¿Qué pasa aquí? Tranquilo, niño. Mírame. A ver, que alguien me explique de qué va el tema. Nada, que ha venido este y se ha puesto a vender tela aquí, afuera en esta tienda. Y yo le dicho que se quite. Y ya está. Dile o que se vaya o lo quito yo. Calma, calma, calma. Que no es para tanto. Además, y eso es modales. ¿Cuántas veces te digo? El llanito, el respeto y la educación siempre por delante. Porque respira tranquilo. De esto me encargo yo, ¿vale? Inglés. Eh. Ajú. Eh. A ver cómo me lo apaño. Eh. You have to excuse my son. He, he has what you English call a short fuse. But what he says is correct. You cannot be selling your things here on the street and definitely not outside my shop. So I am asking you very politely to please move along. Pero no te da lástima. No, nada. Pero, ¿qué tendrá? ¿La edad en tus manos? No, no, esto no se queda así. Eh, wait. Eh, I am forgetting my manners. Eh, my name is Gianni. Gianni Ansaro. But everybody, they call me John. Gianni? Is that like a Spanish name? No, otro que no se entera. It's not Spanish. It's Italian. My forefathers, they were from Genoa. My father, my grandfather, and my great-grandfather, they were all called Gianni. You know, once upon a time, there were so many people living here with that name, they started to call us Giannitos. It's true, verdad? Uh, sí, verdad. <laughs> but now, my wife says we must all have English names. Apparently, it's the fashion. La cosa tu madre. Winning. What can you do? Well, uh, uh, I'm just plain old Peter. Uh, Peter Lynch. Ah, pleased to meet you, Peter Lynch. Uh, 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 so, uh, would you like a, uh, a drink? Are you sure, mate? I wouldn't like to inconvenience you in any way. Oh, but I'd love a drink. A real drink. Oh, but of course. Good boy. Hey, ve y dile a tu hermana que nos traiga una botellita de... Ya me entiende. Y pues ya que está, traíte un par de sillitas también, anda. ¿Tú estás seguro? No, 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 tú me encargo yo. Vete, vete, vete. No, de verdad. Y no le diga nada a tu madre. Todavía. Eh, he's a good boy, really, but very protective of the family. Because if I needed protecting him, eh? ah, please, sit. Ay, chica.
Princess, and I have three sons, Albert, Eddie, and the little one is Shari. Blimey, mate, you Catholic or what? But of course, what else? Um, so, Peter Lynch, tell me, what brings you so far from home? Well, <clears throat> there's this girl back home in England. Um, things weren't exactly working out for us. Uh, she had high aspirations and I wasn't bringing in much dosh. She said, if I couldn't provide for her, then I should leave. So here I am, trying my luck out in another country. I knew it, a woman, typical. They are all the same. You know what they say? Más puede un par de que una carreta. You know, you know the, the, the horse and the cart and the pull of the... No? Inglés tonto. But I give you the advice my father gave me. He said, women are to be loved, not understood. And the sooner you understand that, the better. They are dangerous creatures like the lioness or the crocodile. The little crocodiles, Lola. Um, that is my Princess Victoria and her best friend, Carmen Sita. Niña, oye, quitarse de ahí y no toca lo que no pertenece. Venga, fuera. It's okay, John. I better make a move anyway. Thank you very much for the drink. Yes, but but look, it's late. Uh, what are you going to do now? Where are you going to go? To be honest, I haven't got a clue. All this salesman business is new to me. You know, buying and selling. First time I've ever tried it. <laughs> I bought this lot of a bloke in Manchester. Said it was all the rage down here and I'd make a fortune. I'm actually a manual worker. A plumber. A plumber? Yeah, oh. a plumber. No, 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 a plumber is a good thing. Uh, we do not have many plumbers here. The only available plumbers are Spaniards from La Linea. La Linea? Yes, yeah, yes, it's, it's a Spanish town on the other side of the frontier. They have many plumbers there, but it takes a long time to get a message to them. Then they say they're going to come. Then they don't come. For them, it's always mañana. You know, tomorrow, very unreliable. Plus, I read in the paper, that the council want people like you to register with them. Anda. Con que aquí te habías metido, ¿no? Eh, leoncita de mi vida. <laughs> y de mi corazón. Ven, 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 ven. Que te presenta este muchacho. Um, uh, Peter, this is my wife, Araceli. Araceli, Peter, Peter, Araceli. Uh, pleased to meet you, Mrs. Ansaldo. Hello. Eh, resulta que el muchachito es plomero. ¿Plomero? Sí. ¿Y todo este tiempo ha estado aquí chismoteando y bebiendo contigo? ¡Toca arregle la pompa! You can fix pumps, ¿no? Uh, well, yeah. Come, eso va guía, que llevo días esperando el tío de la línea. She can speak English? Eh, eh, yes, we, we talk Spanish mainly, but I feel us are learning to speak the English, but my sons, they learn the English from the Christian brothers. Oye, cambia, follow me, so va guía, ven pa' cariño. Ven. ¿Qué está pasando? Eh, que resulta que tu madre le ha dicho a Pita que arregle la punta. ¿Pero qué estáis loco? No, 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 resulta que el amigazo es eh, plomero. Amigo, Dan, ¿cómo sabes tú que estás diciendo la verdad? Estos tipos rascos dicen cualquier cosa. 
have you got any grease? You know, like um, butter or oil or, or something? Eddie! Eh, oh, she is okay, Sally. Mira, trae aceite y, y una cosa de esa inglesa, una llave inglesa, anda. Vale. ¿Qué está pasando? Yo, pero yo que soy, loro que resulta el calmuchazo, es inglés, es plomero y le vas a dar la pompa a tu madre. ¿Y tú crees que podrá? ¡Ay, oh, oh, Dios mío, que por favor lo haga! ¡Ay, porque odio a los cubos! ¡Qué gandula eres! ¿Y tú? ¿Que no puedes ni con un cubo de agua? ¡Sí puedo! Uh, nearly there. Uh, could you grab me a, co uh, a cloth? Uh, and a bucket, please. ¡Charlie, un cubo! ¿Y por qué yo? ¡Yo te quiero coger un cubo a tu madre! Ya está. Right, if we could just turn this bit around. Uh, come on, lads, give us a hand. Put, put your hands on here. Okay, right, uh, give it a good twist. Yeah, yeah, slowly, slowly. There's probably a lot of pressure in there. Okay. Oh, no, Rita, Rita, thank you. You come and you stay to eat with us tonight. It's a way of saying thank you. It's the least we can do. Are you sure? I, I wouldn't like to intrude. No, anda que no. Si no te digo no. Donde haya comida de barde, ahí está el inglés. Listen, after the favor you do us, you stay here tonight, we eat and you drink. And tomorrow I will take you to the council and we get you registered and we get you your working papers. You know, my grandfather is the oldest man in Gibraltar. Oh, really? He is not the oldest man in Gibraltar. Embutera. Sí, es eh, porque él me lo ha dicho. Vicky, no le haga casa a tu hermano. Venga, 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 para Pita Lynch, welcome to the Ansarto home. Venga, vamos con él. Que tengo más hambre que un perro Si te va de Smith y Mossy o te va de Blanche y luego te llega al muelle, mira, te puede ir para Londres, para la China, para India, hasta para Australia. Ja, y, y, y al quinto pino. Y encima te cuesta un ojo de la cara. Mira, mira, a Londres nada más. Ida y vuelta. El más barato, 7 libras. Eso para los ricos, ellos. Además, que a mí no me gusta viajar en barco. Me da un mareo. Yo me quedo en libertad. ¿Siete libras? Con un penique a la semana que me dan de pocket money, no me voy ni a los 50. <risa> Padre de Julio sí que lo puedes costear. Es que tienen dinero para todo. No veas el pedazo de vida que tienen en Puerto Mayor, como al lado de la playa. Y el padre le está diciendo que a lo mejor lo manda a boarding school porque no está haciendo muy bien en la escuela aquí. Ah, pero de Gililo yo me voy a decir, si lo digo. Y tú estás haciendo bien porque me siento contigo todos los días a estudiar y a ayudarte con el homework. Oh, un boarding school. Pobrecito Julio. Yo jamás mandaría a mis hijos tan lejos. Claro. Mis niños aquí, con su abuelo, con sus padres, con sus hermanos, claro. que para eso son una familia, ¿no? Hola, Yayo. Hola, Albert. ¿Qué bigote más solo te ha ¡Pita! ¿Qué eh, has hecho? Yes. Uh, ¿Did Albert and Eddie show you a help and tell me? Yes. Do you like Gibraltar? It's a very nice place to live, ¿verdad? 
Uh, yes, thank you, Mrs. Ansaldo. It's a bit different to back home in England, and very small. Uh, but I like the atmosphere. It seems like a friendly place. Hey, Peter, I see your king escape and escape on his life, eh? Hey, Peter? Uh, pardon? What do you mean? But the story is here in the Chronicle. Haven't you read it? No, I must have we occupied the of the port of listen, listen. His Majesty's escape. Intense relief felt by all countries. The alleged assailant of the king, uh, George Andrew McMahon, is described as a journalist aged 34. When was this? A uh, Hyde Park corner. It was on the radio as well. Uh, the king was riding on his horse when a man pushed his way to the front of the crowd and pointed a revolver to the king. It appears a woman noticed the man holding the revolver and attracted the attention of the policeman who knocks the weapon out of the man's hands. And there's hundreds of telegrams of congratulations on his escape uh, from Rome, Berlin, even Herr Hitler. Nice of him to bother, seeing as he must be so busy with the Olympics next month. Look, I'm just a working lad from Manchester. I've not had much of an education, and I know nothing about politics and the like. All I know is football, oh, and sport. But the way I see it, this Hitler fella is an evil little twat. Busy getting rid of all the Jewish athletes I hear. He even got rid of the president of Germany's Olympic Committee just because his grandmother was a Jew. Oh, the new guy they've got to replace him, he wants them uh, white Aryan athletes who he thinks are superior. No Jews have been allowed to compete. That's right. I read about Daniel Prenn, the tennis player, Eric Selig, the boxer, both world class. They've even left the country because they've been excluded from Germany's Olympic team. It makes my blood boil because it makes a mockery of the Olympic code of equality and fair play. Mm. I heard America wants to boycott the games, you know, and move them to another country. I have Jewish friends who have family in Germany, and they've been telling me stories about the Nazi persecution of the Jews. Uh, the Jewish athletes are banned from the, the sports facilities, the swimming pools, even the horse racing. Oh, and to think, they want their teams to salute by giving the raised arm. <laughs> the way I see it, he can stick his salute where the sun don't shine. <laughs> but you know, it seems nobody wants to upset him. And the political situation between Great Britain and Germany is so tense that all it would take is a spark to set the whole of Europe alight. Pero venga, a seguir comiendo, que hay un hoyo. 
¡Qué bueno! Oye, ¿sabéis quién canta esta noche en la feria con la banda municipal? ¿Quién? ¡Sonia Mena! ¡Ah, sí! ¿Qué canta? Ah. Canta copla como las canciones de Conchita Piqué, ah. Estrellita Castro... Y vamos, la muchacha tiene una voz, vamos, que te entra hasta escalofrío por todo el cuerpo. ¡Ay, qué bonitas esas canciones! Oye, ¿solo canta esta noche? Mira, veis yo. Creo que el programa del festejo está aquí. Mira, mañana son los cohetes y el domingo la novillá. Torea, torerito de Triana y Pascual. Eso es lo que a mí me gusta, los toros. Araceli, el domingo me voy a la feria. Muy bien, Dax. Ah, los toros. I know what those are. Um, but what's la feria? It's the fair in la línea. Yes, Peter, they're all going tonight. Mm. Why don't you go with them? Yeah. Ya no lo sabes por inglés. Claro, yo no quiero ir con él. I'd love to. Uh, it's not like I've got anything better to do, eh? Uh, yes, Peter, come with us. Uh, but give us time to get ready. Uh, Mam, ¿te ayuda a Carmen a recoger? Sí, mi reina, anda, irse a ponerse guapa. Eh, Albert, Eddie, ¿tenéis una camisa limpia para el Peter? Que el pobre lleva lo mismo puesto todo el día. Yo lo que me faltaba. Pero bueno. Venga, Pita, let's get you all pretty for the fair. <laughs> Araceli, ¿te acuerdas tú cómo nos maqueábamos nosotros para ir a la feria? Sí, hija. Eso sí que eran los buenos tiempos. Cuando yo tenía un cuerpecito y una cinturita así. Después de cinco niños cambia la cosa un poco. La culpa la tiene este. No de algo más de algo, hijo. Pero Leucita, si tú para mí eres lo más bonito en todo esto. En pasar, que como te arrinches. Anda, ayúdame a recoger los platos. No, no morido que fuese. Mamá, ¿por qué no vamos a la fe esta noche? Porque nosotros vamos mañana, que echan los cohetes. Y además, así me da tiempo de terminar el mantón de crochet que me estoy haciendo y lo puedo estrenar. ¿Y por qué no podemos irnos con los mayores? Porque van a ir a las casetas a bailar y van a llegar tarde y no querrán cargar con ustedes. Claro. Y van en busca de novio y novia. Shally. Y se dan besitos. Anda, Shali, venga ya. Oh, y tú que no estás Yolanda. ¡Uh, Shali, que sí, no anda! ¡No es verdad! Quédate callada, Vicky. Y tú también, mocosa. Si que la quiere, que la mira todo el tiempo. Oye, Yolanda, qué niña más guapa, ¿eh? Pero, Charlie, a mí me parece que es un poco mayor para ti. Yo creo que Carmencita es más de tu edad. <risa> Oye, Dax, nada más que tiene 13 años el niño, no la ni me busca novia tan joven, por Dios, le tendrá tiempo. Es que la vista es libre, ¿eh? ya. Y además, mira qué niña más guapa. Un orgullo para su madre, que ha criado a dos niñas solas. Digo, pero no solita. Que os he tenido a ustedes, que me habéis ayudado, y soy como mi familia. Cuando murió Paco y me dejó sola con dos niñitas. Carmencita acaba de nacer y Yolanda con cinco años. Yo no sabía lo que iba a hacer y pensé que tendría que volver a la línea siendo española. Pero ahí estaban ustedes para ayudarme y apoyarme cuando levanté mi, le mi, mi negocio con el dinero de la viudez. Ay, y gracias a Dios me va muy bien. La pensión siempre está llena y mis niñas me ayudan muchísimo. Es muy difícil quedarse viuda tan joven, Carmen. Pero, hija, el espíritu de lucha que tú has demostrado es de admirar. Y la pensión se te llena porque eres la mejor cocinera de toda Andalucía. <risa> ¡Hola, familia! ¡Ay, hola! ¿Qué hay? ¡Hola! 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 Mira, le preguntaste a tu madre si te puede quedar en mi casa. No, todavía no. Es que no sé si quiero ir. ¿Por qué? My parents are going to take us to the fair first. Y después, oh, nos vamos a la casa del Puente Mayorga. We saw Rafa that we were going to play football with him mañana en la playa. ¿Te acuerdas? Sí, ya, pero después de lo que pasó. Oh, 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 ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? Que el camino es un out for the car. Con que yo y Shari cogimos un pico, una pala y un, y un wheelbarrow to widen it. Y de repente, de la nada, this group of men came out and started to shout at us. Y tuvo que salir mi padre y todo. They said que ahí estaba quitándole empleo al hombre by using us. Y que era ilegal. And if they wanted to widen the path, 
usted ni es que haya empleado hombres de niño. ¿Y qué, qué hizo tu padre? Le dijo que ni siquiera quería un camino, que era una idea. Y le dijo que iba a stop us enseguida. Yeah, bueno, tu padre hizo muy bien en no ofenderlo. El tema de la política está sonido y seguro que no quería represar. Ya, yeah. pero nos pegamos un buen susto, ¿verdad? Ya? ¿Susto? Estaba cagado de miedo. Ay, por favor, ¿me creí que me iban a disparar? Bueno, Julio, lo dejamos para otro día. Otro día. ¿Vale? Seguro, chico. Mira, yo me voy a llegar a la feria mañana. Si quiere, te viene conmigo. Entonces me voy. Que my parents are waiting outside. Buenas noches, familia. Adiós, Julio. Adiós. Recuerda a tus padres. Vale. Yolanda, el vestido te ha quedado pintado, ¿eh? Sí, mamá, me encanta. Muchas gracias. Pinta, very nice. ¿Cuál es la Sony Milan? ¿Cuál es la Marta? Quiero más que a mi vida. Bueno, venga, vámonos, que es muy tarde. Oye, ¿tenéis bastante dinero, niño? Toma, Albert, toma. Aquí ¿Te cuidado en la feria? Sí, con durismo. Sí, sí. Y no gastéis Ay, mucho, ¿eh? Oye, pues ni que apegarse a vuestros hermanos, ¿eh? ¡No os cambiarse! ¡Pita! ¡Haga la Stein! ¡Y no me será un extraño! ¡Shari! Bueno, Leoncita, hace una noche muy agradable. ¿Un paseíto por la calle, Red? No, hijo, tú déjanos nosotros que tenemos postura. Dejando nuestras tareas, llévate a Shally, anda de un pasito. Venga, vámonos, y no me corra, que estas piernas ya, ¿eh? Buenas noches, buenas noches, yo. Yo, yo. ¿Qué es lo que ¿Qué pasa? 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 Mi tatara tatara abuelo solía patrullar en el muro por las noches. Y cuando hacía levante, era todo muy oscuro. Daba espanto. You had to watch your step up there. So what he used to do? He used to sit down and wait for the cloud to move. So that the moonlight could shine through. So he could see the narrow steps. Y era entonces cuando se escuchaban los gritos de los espíritus de todos los hombres que habían muerto allí en 1705. ¿Cómo murieron? Oh, the Spanish were very angry that the British had taken the rock the year before. They promised not to attack, but they did. Y una noche muy oscura, los españoles se escondieron en St. Michael's Cave and they ambushed our men on Charles V Wall. 500 soldiers y todos los refuerzos, all killed. And they're still there today. Yes, ghosts never die. They serve as a reminder to us all, together with the ghosts of all the men who died in the Great Siege. Cuéntanos del Great Siege, ¿eh? Como tu tatarabuelo peleó contra los españoles. Oh, that was a terrible time, Vicky. A terrible, terrible time. You see, Britain had quite neglected Gibraltar in those years. And there was famine. Famine? La bruna, starvation. Mm. One woman died of hunger. Yes. And you know what they had to eat? What? Thistles, con pincho y dientes de león. Dientes de león? No dientes de verdad, tonta. Los de la flor, dandelions. Ah. Sigue, Jejo. Well, the Spanish had been attacking us for years, even though they had signed a piece of paper promising not to. They broke the promise? Eh, pues claro, como de costumbre. <laughs> Well, the Spanish were very strong, and they brought all their ships round to Rocha Bay, and they fired hundreds of cannonballs. Most of the wine houses were hit, and some of the soldiers started stealing the wine. Some of them even died. They were racera, but the Spanish kept bombarding us. Oh, well, sometimes they would stop. ¿Y saben ustedes para qué? No. 
Pues para la siesta. The Spanish would even stop for the siesta. But certainly they were getting very strong. And General Elliot saw that they were gaining power. So one night, 2,000 of our most brave soldiers assembled in three columns in the Red Sands. And they marched out. They marched out towards Lampore Ditch, right? Towards the Spanish lines. And General Elliot was told to stay behind because he was very valuable. Pero después de unas horas, él no pudo resistir más y se reunió con sus hombres. Fue todo muy peligroso. Our soldiers were too quick and too brave. And the Spanish were taken by surprise. They gave way on every side. No se sabe si por miedo o por asombro. But they just didn't defend their lines. Nuestros soldados pusieron mecha hasta los explosives and blew them all up. Yeah, blew them all up. And then for the next few days, they were very, very quiet. But by December, they started gaining strength. So their shots came firing over onto our batteries. En una sola mañana, cuatro hombres perdieron las piernas. You see, it was very difficult to see where the shots were coming from. ¿Saben ustedes lo que tuvieron que hacer to see where the shots were coming from? Uh, think, think. Look very carefully. Yes, but who did the looking, eh? Who did the looking? Think. For uh, little boys that were tried that, they did the looking. And my great, great, great grandfather was one of those little boys. Ooh. And then what happened? Ooh, they brought a, trajeron una flota entera of fireproof ships to destroy Gibraltar completely. And these ships were huge. They had dropped down gates and they could carry 40,000 men. Yes. But, tuvieron la cara dura de mandarle a General Elliot una carta offering him meat. You see, our soldiers only had vegetables on which to live. But General Elliot refused. He wouldn't even take meat for himself. Y después de eso, oh, el espectáculo. There was explosions and fires and noise and shots everywhere. Había cuerpos saltando por los aires. Legs, arms this way and hands the other way. And then there were the noise and the shouts and the screams of the dying and the wounded. It was terrible, absolutely terrible. But in the morning, all the Spanish ships were on fire. Some of them even blew up on their own ammunition. Was that the end? Give up. The Spanish carried on bombarding. 1,000 shots they fired onto our town every day. But our soldiers held firm and the Spanish gave way in the end. They surrendered. They came out waving a white flag. And that was the end of a terrible siege which lasted three years, seven months, and 12 days. Venga, Carmencita, vamos a ir a nosotros. Tú eres un soldado, yo te disparo y te quita la pierna. Okay. ¡Bum! ¡Mi pierna! ¡Oh! ¡Sangre! 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 ¿Qué pasa, Bianca? ¿Do you think the Spanish will ever attack us again? Well... a casa. No podía parar de pensar en mi madre y en lo preocupada que tendría que estar por mí. La gente corría como loca. Me empujaron, me rompieron el traje y me arrancaron la pineta. Mi madre ahorró para comprar la tela y estuvo noches enteras cosiendo. Me dio mucha pena. Tan bonito y con la ilusión que me lo hizo. Esa noche yo no sabía lo que estaba pasando en la feria. La gente corría, lo escuchaba los tiroteos tan cerca y yo no sabía lo que hacer. 
a mi lado cae un hombre. Vi su cara y, y la sangre. Creo que estaba muerto. Esa misma noche cambió el panorama. En una sola noche, más de mil refugiados se presentaron en Gibraltar. Tal y como pasaban los días, más y más se presentaban en las puertas de Gibraltar. Y los bomberos tuvieron que ir con sus mangueras para controlar las masas. Y es que no había sitio. Montaron tiendas de campaña en los jardines de Victoria. Abrimos las puertas de nuestros hogares. Mi pensión se convirtió en un refugio. Compartíamos ropa y comida, la escasa comida que teníamos. Porque de noche a la mañana cortaron el suministro de víveres. Ni fruta, ni verdura, ni pescado. Ahora todo venía de Marruecos. Y claro, todo se puso más caro. Echábamos como sardina en lata. Mi padre, mi abuelo, mi madre, mi hermana y mis tres hermanos. Comparto mi cuarto con mi hermana y tres niñas de la línea. Una de ellas está muy malita. Así que duerme en el suelo con una manta y una, y una almohada y dejo que ella duerme en mi cama. No llegaron de muy lejos. María no se pudo venir ese día, ya habían cerrado la frontera. Pero Pedro tenía un barquito en la tunara. Cogieron las niñas y para la caleta. Traían los puestos, pero claro, María se trajo su virgencita, liadita entre sábanas. Muchos llegaron en patera. Ya no había otra manera de llegar. Y dormían a donde podían. Había que salir, me dijo María. No se sabía quién se iría al siguiente. Llorando me contó cuando vinieron por su hermano Raúl. Pero ella no pudo ser nada. Ya no se sabe nada de él. Anoche vi a mi madre llorar. Esto me preocupa. Mi madre no llora. Todo lo que está pasando la tiene muy afectada. Y a mí, a mí me preocupa la economía. La gente no tiene dinero y la tienda no va muy bien. Pero tiramos para adelante. Como dice mi padre, al mal tiempo, buena cara. Alves y Yello dicen que la situación va a mejorar, que ya pronto acabará la guerra civil y que Franco estará con el gobierno de España y todo volverá a la normalidad de antes. Pizza es muy bueno con nosotros. Nos trae queso, leche y comida. Mi familia todavía no lo sabe. Pero anoche me besó. I send to every household of my people this message. For the second time in the lives of most of us, we are at war. I am General Clive Liddell, Governor of Gibraltar. When I arrived here on the 11th of July, 1939, I inspected a rock which, old Ironsides, my predecessor, had thrown himself into preparing for war. The garrison troops had already heavily fortified the exterior of the rock, secured the beaches and all vulnerable points, 
while inside the rock, with considerable amount of blood, sweat and tears. The Royal Engineers were blasting out a vast limestone fortress, honeycombed with miles of tunnels, and the means for Gibraltar to withstand the storm that had been threatening it for so long. You see, when the Spanish Civil War started three years previous, and General Franco proclaimed himself Generalissimo, it was obvious to myself and to others that it was only a matter of time before Gibraltar got dragged into that conflict. Sure enough, overnight, desperate refugees from the Campo area clamoured to be let into the walls of Gibraltar. Many were let in. It was all that could be done. You see, Chamberlain had signed a non-intervention agreement, effectively tying our hands against doing anything more. But while the agreement limited us, it emboldened others. General Franco invited Hitler into Spain to test his new weapons of war and bloody his troops. The Nazis, keen for the rehearsals, sent in men, tanks, and the Condor Legion of bomber aircraft. It was these aircraft that reduced the peaceful, vast town of Guernica into smoking rubble. And as the civilians tried to get away, fighter aircraft were sent in to mercilessly strafe the road with bullets, massacring men, women, and children as they fled. It was a plan like this, a plan that could very easily be played over the skies of Gibraltar with no air cover and very few air raid shelters. Gibraltar would be brought to its knees. By 1939, there were over 20,000 civilians living on the rock. Various plans had been formulated on what to do with them. Obviously, the young and fit men would be absorbed into the workforce. But that still left 13,000 women, children and elderly. That's a large number of what would become useless mouths once the rock came under attack. The painful truth is that they could do nothing to defend the fortress. If there was a siege, what then? How long would it take for their anger to turn towards us when there was no food to eat? What then? No, there was no option but to evacuate these civilians to safety. A plan was set into motion and it was my job to see it done. After all, the fortress came first. Bueno, tú tranquila, look at me, you forget about the microphone, and Vicky, let's uh, start talking about your book, which gives a very personal account of your evacuation to Casablanca in the first instance, before you were re-evacuated to London. Let's talk about Casablanca first. You were 12 at the time, it must have been both terrifying and exciting. Well, yes, it was. As a young girl, I was very excited at all the new things that were happening around me. But then um, that was all right until France capitulated. And then everything changed. Let's talk about the first uh, few days of June 1940 uh, when uh, France capitulated. Now, the French army had fallen, it'd been left shattered, it fell at the hands of the Axis powers, but their navy was amazingly intact. So Winston Churchill had some hard choices. He couldn't allow the French fleet to fall at the hands of the Navy. So, cuéntame, ¿qué pasó? Well, he sent a fleet from Gibraltar to Oran to deal with them.
The order was given, and Force H under Admiral Somerville steamed full speed ahead towards the port of Mez el Kabir. He set about surrounding the French and ordering them either to sail to Britain, the USA, or scuttle their ships in the next six hours. At first, the French, playing for time, refused to speak to negotiators. Then a message was intercepted from the Vichy government ordering French reinforcements to move urgently to Iran. Churchill was done playing games and his orders were clear. Settle everything before dark. Shoot! The British fleet attacked, and in less than 10 minutes, over a thousand French soldiers were dead, and three battleships sunk. And all this must have had a tremendous effect on you and the rest of the evacuees. Um, ¿Entendía lo que estaba pasando? We didn't know what was happening. We, esto pasó de madrugada, so we didn't know anything. And then we heard que um, France had fallen, and we had to leave. ¿Y algo gordo había pasado? Que algo muy gordo había pasado. And we had to leave, leave everything behind, and, and go. ¿Y la gente entendía? Did people understand? How they, did they react to that? My mother was a very clever woman, and she realized that we still had some French money left, some French francs. So she said, this is not going to be any good for us anywhere else. So go out, go to some shops, go to the jeweler's shops and buy some gold. Gold is always money, but spend this money and uh, bring whatever it is. So we went out and uh, one after another, the jeweler's shops we went into, they wouldn't attend to us. Anglais, Anglais, out. We were thrown out of the shops, so they wouldn't sell us anything. And um, in the end, we went into a shop where they sold very nice leather bags. And so we went in there, we bought the leather bags, pasa líder dinero. And uh, then we went back home, packed, and went downstairs a ver si podíamos coger un taxi o un coche de caballo que nos llevara al muelle. Bueno, we went down, pero ni hablar, ni hablar. Hasta nos cupieron y todo. Uy, qué asco. And uh, so we said we have to walk. We started to walk. Menos mal que era las seis de la mañana y todavía el sol no había salido porque Casablanca en mes de julio tiene tela. So we, we started to walk, but we had to push or pull our luggage. Y era un caminito. But anyhow. Entonces fuimos y, y cuando por el camino veíamos esa familia, mira, esos son de Gibraltar. Y aquellos que salen por aquella calle también, ay, todos íbamos para allá. Así que terminamos que todos íbamos el mismo camino. Y esta gente entendía lo que estaba pasando. It must have been so different to nowadays. News travels so fast. We have the internet. It must have been so difficult. We, did, we didn't even have a radio, so we didn't know what was happening. And there were orders? The evening before, somebody came, rang the doorbell at about midnight, and said, you have to be at the port at six o'clock in the morning. And Vicky, all this must have been exhausting. So tell me, when you get there, what is it that you exactly do? Bueno, when we got there, the first thing is, busca la sombra, porque ya el sol estaba saliendo, y ya estaba haciendo bastante calor, con que vimos unos warehouses por allí, por un lado, y nos fuimos, nos pusimos así pegaditos, que había un poquito de sombra, formamos una cola, y ahí nos quedamos de pie, y ahí estuvimos todo el día, todo el día de pie, sin probar nada. And then, what happened? Commodore Crichton happened. He's, a, he's quite a figure in your ah, story. Yes. He wrote a book, Convoy Commodore, which has an account of what happened that day. While these events were taking place, I was leading a convoy of 15 freighters overflowing with thousands of French troops. These men had given up the fight against Germany and we were taking them to Casablanca. 
It was an unfortunate port, and an, unc an uncertain reception awaited us. Five miles south of Casablanca, we came across an assortment of French naval craft heading to us at high speed. Two destroyers circled and signalled for us to stop instantly or be sunk. Having no choice, I did so, and just as well, because soon after, two submarines surfaced to be followed by a squadron of light bombers who flew just above us. Our day was fast becoming interesting. My ship was taken into port, and we began to disembark our cargo. No sooner had the soldiers disappeared than a mass of civilians poured through the dock gates and spilled onto the road leading up to the jetty. Black troops forced them forward. Men, women and children stumbling along the baking, dusty quayside. Thousands of them clutching battered suitcases, parcels and each other. A sad, pathetic sight I will never forget. I was then told that my ships were under arrest and would remain so until we took on 1,000 of the civilians squatting miserably on the quayside. I insisted that the ships were totally unfit to put to sea with these people. The stores were empty, the galleys had no food, and there were no lavatories except for the few for officers and crew, so the holes were disgusting and the smell indescribable. As Commodore Crichton argued with the Admiral about the condition of the ships, the evacuees were left on the pier side with no food or water. Old men and women collapsing in the heat, mothers desperately trying to shield their babies from the baking sun. And this, it went on for hours. Then they began to herd them like animals onto the ships. <laughs> was a grave blot on the honour and decency of a so-called civilised nation to see the vindictive way in which they carried out their duties. So, I ordered the men and crew to mingle with the people to obstruct the efforts of the French. They were pushing them on board with rifles. The ploy worked as they crowded round the gangways, screaming, yelling and shouting. In the end, the troops gave up. Talk to me about the journey back. It must have been dreadful considering the condition of the ships and also the lack of food. Yes, lack of food and water. Uh, we went up the gangplank and there was a sailor there telling us to go down these steps, but we had heard que los barcos estaban sucio, sucio, sucio. Así que I got my mother's hand and my sister's y nos fuimos por el deck y nos sentamos detrás de un grupo de sandbags y ahí nos quedamos quietos ahí duramos hasta hasta que llegamos a Gibraltar hacía frío oh cuando se hizo de noche pues imagínate en medio del Atlantic sentado ahí en, encima del deck un frío de morirse pero entonces los marineros fueron fantásticos y salieron con unos mugs de chocolate caliente oh Cogimos los mugs, pusimos las manos heladas así en el, en, el, en el esto y nos fuimos tomando el chocolate calentito. Qué cosa más buena. Y entonces, como nos vieron tiritando, ya ve los vestiditos de verano en medio del Atlántico y trajeron abrigos, bufandas, mantas, de todo. Nos fueron tapando a todos, acorrucaron a los babies, en fin. Y ahí nos quedamos quietos toda la noche gracias a ellos. There's a, a part of the story I don't understand. Hadn't Commodore Crichton received a telegram from the governor instructing him not to bring you to Gibraltar? Yes, absolutely. It said, on no account bring them here. We had enough trouble getting them out. Because at the same time, the war cabinet had made it clear you should not be sent to the UK. Precisely. Ahora, ¿qué hacía este hombre con nosotros? No tenía agua, no tenía comida, 
Y ahí estábamos con que he did, my, my mother always said, he did a Nelson. He turned the blind eye to the notice from Gibraltar not to come back. And he took a course straight for Gibraltar. So you arrive in Gibraltar, but it doesn't end there because you're not allowed to disembark. Bueno, we didn't know, but apparently <coughs> the men that day had heard we were not going to disembark. So the men in Gibraltar mutinied, they went on strike, and they went and stood outside the convent. And they stood there in silence, and the governor had to come out and speak to them. And it was only after that that we were allowed to land. Entonces, we, we landed, y allí en el muelle había una fila de army lorries, y cada army lorry tenía un cartelito, uno iba a Roja, otro iba a Casemates, otro cada donde iba. Y había uno que iba a Governor's Parade, que era donde nosotros vivíamos. So we climbed into that, y nos llevaron, y ahí nos bajamos de la Milori, y ya por fin dijimos, ya, ya estamos en casa. It, it must all be so emotional for you, but there's more to tell, because ya estaba en casa, but there's a top secret plan to re-evacuate you. So days later, they tell you, you have to pack again, and you would go on to spend 18 days at sea. That's right. We joined, well, we were put in a convoy of 24 ships, and uh, we left Gibraltar, I think it was the 30th of July, just after my 13th birthday. And we left Gibraltar and we sailed out and we didn't know where we were going, we were not told anything. And I remember sitting on the floor on the deck and looking out at these 24 ships in a formation, the sun, the blue sea, the blue sky, month of July, and just the white froth coming from the ships it made a beautiful picture, but we didn't know where we were going. ¿Y la comida? Bueno, the food had been placed in un hold allí, de cualquier manera. And uh, after about six or seven days, it all went rotten. La carne, the bread, the meat, the fruit, the vegetables, everything went moldy, it all went green. So we couldn't eat it, there was nothing. So we formed a line on the deck and we started throwing it into the sea. And all the time I was thinking, all these German submarines, they're going to see all this food and they're going to know that there are ships with people passing along here. Then you don't so forgot. Well, anyway. Te puedo preguntar, did you question why you were taken to London? Because London was being bombed at the time. So we could say, literally, you were taken out of the frying pan into the fire. Well, we didn't know. We didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what was happening. We hadn't been told anything. So uh, we didn't know where, where the ship was going to dock. But we arrived at Swansea. And uh, we were taken to an empty school. And um, a big room with a long table full of food. Plates of ham, cheese, bread. Bueno, nos tiramos como loco. And we had a good meal there. And, and then they said we had to pass a medical. Bueno, we were all very worried because we had been 18 days on the ships. No form of washing or changing clothes or anything. And we were really quite dirty. Y nos daba vergüenza que nos diera un médico. Anyway we passed the medical. And after that, they took us to the station and put us in a train. Y todos sentados en el tren, we didn't know where we were going. And we were sitting there, and I could see in the distance some searchlights in the sky. Habrá algo por ahí, anyway. Y de pronto, two of these searchlights crossed, así. And in the center, there was a plane. It looked like a brooch. And we were looking at it, y de pronto, it burst into flames, and it fell. So, 
The train arrives to London. That's right. ¿Qué pasa? We arrived at Paddington Station at two o'clock in the morning. Y estaba aquello así. Soldiers, all sorts of uniforms, and civilians. And at the back, a row of red double-decker buses. And I thought, I want to go on one of those. I've never seen those before, anyway. And um, a voice in the train told us to get out of the train by the rear end. So we started that way. And I looked back, and the front end, it was being filled with women and children who had been standing on the platform. And then we realized that we were being taken into London, and these women and children were being taken in this train out to the safety of the country. We Gibraltarians would have a very different story to tell. And that story will be told by a different group of Gibraltarians, those who were left behind and would fight for your return. They would become the first generation of Gibraltarian politicians. Albert Riso, Sam Benedi, Antonio Valdorino, and of course, a certain Joshua Hassan. Nosotros, el pueblo de Gibraltar. This morning, we all woke up with hope. With hope that we would see our families again. With hope that we would hold them in our arms once more. With hope that fate would return those loved ones who had been so cruelly snatched away from us and taken to alien shores. But how quickly our hopes can be dashed by painful reality. Those are our families on board those filthy ships. Those are our wives who are crawling in excrement and vomit. Those are our parents who find themselves imprisoned in these floating cesspits. Those are our children who are not even considered worthy enough of stepping on their own native soil. And like you, I too am appalled. Like you, I too am incensed. And like you, I too want to confront those British bayonets and look at those pale soldiers in the face and dare them to spill my Gibraltarian blood. We must temper this anger. We must control these enraged beasts that lurk inside us and let common sense prevail. Let us not make the British angry. Instead, let us make them listen. Let us march to the convent and show Governor Liddell that we Gibraltarians will dot our caps no more. That we will not rest until each and every single one of our loved ones is back in our arms. Until they are all under our protection. And until they can all feel the land of their birth at their feet and say to themselves, Etamo en nuestro libertad. Etamo en nuestro peñón. Etamo en nuestra casa. Pues mira, eh, la, 
ópera estuvo preciosa. Después habló Fabian Picardo, que habló muy bien. Después nos dieron drinks y tapas. Todo buenísimo, muy abundante. Comimos mucho, todavía no se había terminado una fuente y ya salía otra. Y después al final, lo, los testimonials de, de, de Le Vacuis. ¿Testimonials? ¿Eso qué? Pues eso es, at each, uh, the vacuees who went to Madeira, Casablanca, Jamaica, London, Northern Ireland, each had a story to tell. So they, they all spoke and spoke very well. It was very, very interesting. But the ones who went to Madeira and Jamaica, they didn't have it that bad. It wasn't like you had to go to London and suffer the bombs. Bueno. It was a question of luck. Uh, they suffered in another way. They suffered separations. Their husbands stayed, husbands and sons stayed behind in Gibraltar. They left to a, a place they didn't know. So each in their own way, everybody suffered. Everybody suffered. I bet there were a lot of love stories, no, yeah? Sí, I believe que un montón. Estaba en Jamaica. Osvaldo conoció a Anita y se casaron. They had children, then they went back to Gibraltar, but then they returned to Jamaica. Después en Madeira estaba esta Silvana que vivía en Governor Street. Esa tuvo un novio portugués, yo que sé cuántos años. <laughs> I remember, yeah, yeah, you telling me that there were lots of tropical storms, there were earthquakes, and even a hurricane that went over the camp. But nobody was hurt, no? La suerte del llanito. In London, all the English people wanted to live near the Gibraltarians because they said we were so lucky, we never got a direct hit. And, uh, y allí pasó algo por el estilo. Pero así que... God's will. God's will. We mustn't go against God's will. God's will or not, yeah, yeah. You've managed to survive all those air raids. I can't imagine spending all those day and night in the underground shelters. Ima, seeing a life form. <laughs> we, had no we had no choice, Robertito. We just had no choice at all. Thousands of you in this country have had to leave your home and be separated from your fathers and mothers. To you, living in new surroundings, we send a message of true sympathy. Exactly, but when I came to, I found I was being carried to the first aid post where they bandaged my head. Just a few cuts. The rest of your family, are they all right? Oh yeah, just a few cuts and bruises. Maggie had to stay in the hospital. Mum's there with her now. And Dad's arranging the papers for little Fred's visit to the countryside. Then we need to find a place to stay. As in our neighbour's house, we're all destroyed. The roof was blown right off, and Maggie's bed was hanging over the edge of the first floor. A tree in the garden next door was uprooted, and that fell on their shelter, totally crushing it. Luckily, they decided to sleep in the cellar that night, so they were safe. Blimey, that was lucky. Yeah, did you hear about that big raid on Thursday night? 
We were all down in our shelter. Suddenly the door burst open and all these people came in. They were all covered in blood. Everyone was crying. And they, they put a stretcher down in front of me and a woman was on it. Her hair was all matted with plaster and blood and I didn't know what to do. So I, I started picking glass out of her face. She asked me for a cigarette, of course I don't smoke. One of the men nearby, he the other bag and put it in her mouth. Was she all right? No, she died. I hate this war. Anyway, old girl, Sheila, you can stay with me until you get sorted out, so don't you worry. Oh, thanks, Lily. That's really kind of you. Here we go. The refugees from Gibraltar. <laughs> Introduce me to some of the girls that work there. 
You should see how they dress Mary. So fashionable, the hair and makeup is perfect. We've met these American GIs. American GIs? So guapissimo, Mary. And so much fun to be around. Mira, this, they gave me this gun. Que hasta se puede masticar. Anda. Pero tú no te fíes. Eh? These guys have a gun in every pot. Did they try to kiss you? Mary, pero tú por quién meto? Ay, hija. Yo no soy como alguna, eh. Yo ya sé que estamos en guerra. But that's not going to change who I am. Mira, I just want to have a little bit of fun and put this wall behind me just for a bit. So, are you coming with us? No, maybe some other time. So, are you going to tell me who it's from? A friend. What friend? Eh, Laurita, de la Caleta. Really? And what does he say? She, Yolanda, she, not he. Tú a mí no me engaña. Come on, tell me. I can keep a secret. You promise? Of course. It's from Peter. Peter? El inglés? Niña, cacha. We've been writing for some time now, but my family don't know yet. He decided to stay in Gibraltar and offer his services there rather than return to the UK. Me escribe unas cosas tan bonitas. Mira, his writing is like poetry. Can't wait to hold you again and kiss under a tree again. Then you get it all again! No ves que hay gente que intenta dormir? ¡Qué escandalosa soy! Bueno, yo me voy. Estoy en el Firewatch Rock esta noche con George. ¿A dónde va, Charlie? To the roof again? Sí. Estos alemanes dejan caer los incendiary bombs como la lluvia. Hay que apagarlas con sacos de arena y cubos de agua antes que empiecen a quemarlo todo. Y ahora que viene con una carga explosiva adentro, son más peligrosas que nunca. La otra noche explotó una y nos arrojó a mí y a George de un lado del techo al otro. Charlie, you really careful, ¿vale? Que we stay down here and we get really worried about what happened to you. Niño, ponte algo más de abrigo, anda, que hace mucho frío esta noche. Toma, llévate mi bufanda. No, Jason, llévate la. Llévate la. Llévate la. ¿A ti te hace falta más que a mí? No te apures. Estoy bien. Ten cuidado, eh. ¿Cómo hay, vale? Adiós. Adiós, adiós. Carmen, vente, vamos un rosario para el niñón. Ave María, llena eres de gracia, Señor es contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto del vientre. Santa María, Madre. A la serie. Estoy preocupada por las niñas. Esto es un trauma para ella. Y no sabemos la secuela que puede tener esta maldita guerra. ¿Tú crees que esto se acabará algún día? Sí, mujer. Todo lo que empieza, pues, tiene que terminar. Tú verás como ya pronto estaremos en nuestro peñón. Tú en tu casita y tu pensión, y yo en mi casita con mi Juan y mi Albert y mi Eddie. Ay, ¿cómo estarán? No lo sé. El ejército se ha quedado con todas nuestras casas. Necesitan el espacio. Tienen que alojarse en algún sitio. Ay, ¿tú crees que mi pensión estará ahí cuando volvamos? Sí, mujer. Y si no está, pues ya buscaremos una solución. Siempre la vemos eso, ¿no, Carmen? Lo importante es volver. Una vez que estamos ahí, pues ya no la apañaremos. Pero tú sabes el miedo que me da de volver. Se escuchan tantas historias. Mira lo que le pasó al barco que llevaba a la comunidad india de Gibraltar. El gobierno decidió que no podían ser evacuados a Marruecos por el tema de la religión y la lengua. Bueno, zarparon para la India. Y cuando pasaron por debajo de África, mandaron telegramas a los familiares para avisar que ya pronto llegaban. Vaya error. Los telegramas fueron interceptados por los alemanes. 
que fueron en busca del buque y lo torpedearon. Pero gracias a Dios, ninguno murió. Solo un hombre de un ataque al corazón. Oye, el pobre. Pero espérate, porque hay, hay más aún. A los supervivientes lo metieron en otro barco con destino a Francia. Y cuando iba por la costa, fue torpedeado por un submarino británico. Nueve de los indios de Gibraltar murieron, incluyendo la familia Kupchan de entera. La madre, el padre, las tres hermanas y el hermano. Solo quedó el niño de nueve añitos. ¿Y ahora qué hace sin su familia? Angelito, hija tan solito en este mundo. Yo me imagino que lo mandarán a los campos de prisioneros, ¿no? ourselves up and it's good to have a good old sing song isn't it something cheerful here yeah, listen i know a little song that would cheer up your little girl what's her name uh, uh, carmencita little carmen little carmen, <laughs> little carmen. <laughs>
Soon you'll go dog, you'll have none, none, none. For all souls, you'll need a rabbit hole. So run, Hitler, run, Hitler, run! Oh. Gibraltar. I don't even know where it is. She didn't say much. Oh, I can tell you a lot about Gibraltar. Oh, now you've got him started. If you want to know anything about Gibraltar, my father is the person to ask. He's a walking history book. <laughs> you know, my grandfather is the oldest man in Gibraltar. ¿Qué dice, niña? <laughs> These young ones, they have no idea of age. I mean, I might have a few wrinkles and a few white hairs, don't feel a day over 30. Oh, I like a man with a few white hairs. I think it makes him look very attractive. And I like a man with a beard and all. Oh. Very manly. Jejo! Jejo, que te está ligando, eh? Si yo a mi edad lo único que he ligado es este resfriado que tengo. Eh, oye, Araceli, ¿por qué no va a comer y hace las pases con ella y me deja de hablar con esta señora? Anda, venga, Sophie, ven para allá. So, you like history? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Gibraltar is a unique place, very unusual. Uh, we Janitos are a rare breed, and I tell you, once you've met a Janito, you will never forget him. Oh, I won't forget you. Oh. <laughs> well, let me tell you a story. Behold a mighty mountain standing lonely in the sea, of use to no one but the birds. For years it used to be free. The kingdom of Castile stood by, and the mountain lay neglected. Till 711, when Tariq arrived, it fast became respected. The kingdom of Castile grew strong and finally seized the rock. It seized the rock, lock, stock, and barrel. The castle and the key thus formed the symbol of Gibraltar. The rock became a sanctuary, its status never to alter. Rook and the Grand Dutch Prince had seized this special rock. And this remarkable promontory is now a true British rock. The Kingdom of Castile went forth and signed a new treaty. The rock would be forever British. British in perpetuity. So, what was once a silent hill ignored by those around it is now a famous queen adored by those who crowned it. Behold a mighty mountain standing firmly in the sea. Red, white, and proud, forever we will be. I thank you all for seeking my opinion on the Constitution for this fledgling association. We've come a long way since being little more than a, a bunch of janitos dishing the dirt of discontent, inspired, no doubt, by a drink or two. And I commend Mr. Albert Riso for calling this meeting at this packed Prince of Wales Club. As a young Jewish lawyer, I am aware that I do not share the trade union pedigree of many of you colleagues, especially Mr. Riso, who has a long and distinguished history of fighting for the rights of ordinary workers. For while the arrival of Governor Mason McFarlane has represented a pleasant change from his predecessor, Viscount Gort, the fact remains that fighting for the rights of Gibraltarians is still imperative. Our families are still abroad, and many of them have spent the last few months cowering in shelters, hiding from Hitler's bombs. Here at home, we are fighting the fight on a different front, to remind our imperial landlords and the military might of the British Empire 
that we Gibraltarians have the right to have rights. You all know that I've had my doubts over the proposed name for this organization. I've already expressed my opinion that the name Gibraltar Association does not fully convey our fight for workers' rights. Therefore, I would like to propose a different name, one which I feel truly reflects this heartfelt purpose. The Association for the Advancement of Civil Rights, the AACR. And I make this proposal with a guarantee that I, like all you others around me, will not stop fighting until we have put an end to these days of separation and heartache. You must remember this, a kiss is just a kiss, a sigh is just a sigh. I didn't love you straight away, and that untidy mop of hair and glasses did little to impress me. You were always so nervous. You took my breath away the moment I first saw you, but I fell in love with you that night at the dance. Era tan romantico. The band was playing, and the sweet sounds of Pepe's guitar floated into the warm summer night. Everyone was dancing. All night long I've been plucking up the courage to ask you to dance. All night long I've been waiting for you to ask me. What if you said no? What does it take for a man to ask a girl for a dance? Why would the most beautiful girl in the room want to dance with me? He kept smiling at me. Like an idiot, I kept smiling. Smiling, pero sin pregunta. I was frozen. I couldn't take it anymore. So I headed for the door. Then suddenly... You were in front of me. And as you spoke, me fijé en tus ojos. Azules. I don't think she heard me. She just kept staring. En ese momento, sabía que me estaba enamorando de ti. And I just reached out and we began to dance. I wanted that song to last forever. It's been so long, my love, since that first kiss. Too, Too many, many years, years have, have passed. passed. This is General Dwight D. Eisenhower, Commander-in-Chief of the Allied Force. The Italian government has surrendered its armed forces unconditionally. When the Italians surrendered, we began to have some hope that our people would come back home. But this ray of sunshine was soon clouded over when the departure of Governor Mason McFarlane was announced. This kind man was giving rousing cheers by us locals when he left. But for his replacement, Sir Ralph Eastwood, there would be a different display of emotion. Under his watch, what should have been a better time instead became a bitter time. The return of our families would have as much trauma as had the leaving. The letters kept coming. Estamos usados los knees and hats. Not one, but two or three families together. And there's no furniture, just some beds. We are cold all the time. Y esta ropa que no abriga para nada. We have no heating. Solo el horno nos da calor. Y encima, pocos médicos y los que hay es que no valen para nada. The baby. 
que no para de llorar. La condición aquí es asquerosa. ¡Queremos volver a casa! The sad, steady drip, drip, drip of these letters fills the men here with sadness, fear, and anger. I miss the children. El ruido de los niños. It's curious we don't notice their laughter. They're singing. Their games. Until they're gone. We want them home! The AACR was very clear. We wanted everyone back, regardless of conditions here. The British, who still saw us as a possession, were having none of that. This was their fortress and they would bring us back in the order and in the numbers they wished. It was all wrapped up in good promises. If we are patient, they will build us new housing. There will be enough doctors and nurses and schools, which would greatly improve our lives here. But absence not only makes the heart grow fonder, it also makes you more than a little mad. Valiente entripao por cuerpo, petantísimo sordao metido por todos lados, como purga sacudía, hasta en nuestras casas, y sin ánimo ni órdenes de salir. Oh, eso sí está bien, pero mientras tanto, los nuestros, mi chico, mi leoncita, Esparciado por medio mundo. Military requirements, dice buen gobernador. Y yo, sin perder respeto, pienso para mí. Señor gobernador, eso se lo dice usted a lo suyo, porque su meti de tonto ni un pelo. Y la calle, la poca vergüenza de la calle real, ¿eh? donde antes se paseaba con alegría, escuchando esos pasos dobles y esas canciones que sonaban de los cafés. Ahora, todo lo que se escucha son peleas y palabrotas, y por la mañana te levanta una calle encharcada de meao, de vómito y manta de cristal roto y yo. Yo no paro de pensar en mis vecinos que se tuvieron que marchar dejando todo atrás. Todos sus bienes, sus su pequeños tesoros, sus cositas personales, todo bien arregladito en casa para el día de regreso. Y como les digo yo ahora, que no le queda nada Nada, lo han vislado todo. Y pobrecitos tendrán que empezar de nuevo. Bueno, ¿qué digo yo? Tendremos todo que aprender a empezar de nuevo. system of claiming evacuees was introduced and was, of course, immediately loathed. How could it not? For someone had to occupy not only the front of the queue, but also the middle and the unlucky end of it. In a small community, that was a catastrophic element to add to the transition and was the reason why we said no. They had started a space race, which would add tension and suspicion to what should have been happy homecomings. Especially when it came out that their own British forces' families could come and go as they please. In order to come home, 
you have to have someone here who will vouch for you, give you somewhere to live. My family, they have no problem. Carmen and the girls, being Spanish, they have no one to vouch for them. Yolanda and I have been writing. Nan serio? Bueno. Es que cuando se fue, me di cuenta que la extrañaba bastante. Bueno, un montón. Y we've been writing. Y en verdad, I think we're in love. My mother tells me Yolanda's trying to put on a brave face. But when she hears people talking about their plans to come back home, her smile fades and she drifts off into silence. So I'm going to sponsor them. Yolanda no puede perder su sonrisa. ¿Verdad? Tú no sabes lo que me acaba de enterar. ¿Lo qué? El hijo de puta de Eastwood se está haciendo un palacio por ahí del Lighthouse. ¿Cómo? Sí, Pepe está trabajando ahí. But Pero, what's he moving there for? He's probably leaving in a few months. He says the convent is too hot in the summer. Oh, really? He's too hot? They are freezing in Northern Bloody Island. My love, the winter here has been unbearable. We have icicles in our huts. Jeju's got a terrible cough that keeps us awake at night. The concrete floors and the corrugated walls do little to keep the cold out. An old lady was found dead in a hut. Pobrecita, se murió del frío. It started like all dreams do, not like a dream at all. I'm on Eastern Beach with the other lads of the Gibraltar Defence Force. It's really hot and the sun is high above us. We're filling sandbags. Seems like we're always filling sandbags. Only this time, I don't have a shovel, just my hands. So the sand is trickling through my fingers, but. But I don't care, because my dearest Mary, with the smile like sunshine, is looking right at me. My body aches to embrace her, and I can see she feels the same. Then, then the sun begins to rise around her. She begins to sink into the beach, as if it were liquid. I try to move forward to help her, but find my own legs are already way steep in this quicksand and getting deeper by the second. She calls out to me to help her, but I am drowning too. Her final cry is echoing in my ears for hours after I wake in a cold sweat. How much longer? When will this end? When will I get to see my mother again? Mi abuelo, my grandfather. He should be here with me, living his last days in the patio, telling his stories, playing dominoes, y haciendo la chitería en la tablita. Our home was transformed into a fortress, and now the fortress has no room for its own? How does someone fight such British bulldog logic? It's not the size of the dog in the fight that counts. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Our plan should be outlandishly simple. <coughs> Let common sense prevail. But how can we achieve that when it's the one thing truly lacking from the situation? Well, on our side is the fact that they are trapped in here with us. And we must make sure that they do not turn their backs. Sometimes, you just have to keep knocking at a particular door in order to knock it down. So, we end up, and we, we raise up an endless loop of pressure. We make our needs and grievances known. 
We circumnavigate the chain of command and pester the government in Britain with letters and complaints. We pressure our government and the War Office in Britain and, and seek some backdoor influence. We paint the, the picture of our sorrow and lay it at their feet. We make it clear that we understand the meaning of united action. That we understand Britain's need for us and that they must do the same. We Britain not under it. Tools down is an impressive sight when 5,000 men take to the streets and everything shuts down. We Britain not under it. A sea of men marching from Irish town past the convent. Repatriation. Service of the empire, we have given up our families. Where well, there's a will, there's a way. And now, we want them home. Casi nada, Vicky. Ya casi nada. Mira, dentro de nada veremos el peñón. I hope it's the same as we left it. No lo veo. Canta conmigo. Solo donde vi la luz, tengo pues a mi ilusión. Déjame, quiero morir junto a aquel para mí. Gran peñón, la línea y el campamento, ángeles y hay mucho más. Lo domina con su altura. El peñón de Gibraltar, aunque América es muy grande y tiene mucho que ver, yo quiero a mi peñoncito, a que te me dio a crecer. Llévame donde nací, que a tu lado quiero estar. No hay un sitio para mí, como mi buen libertad. Solo donde vi la luz, tengo puesta mi ilusión. Déjame, quiero morir junto a aquel para mí. childhood friend Pepe Roman, who had been evacuated to Jamaica and died there, never fulfilling his wish to return to the rock and be buried here. <laughs> Jeju used to say that whenever we sang it, Pepe would be back home with us every time. Seven weeks after our return, Jeju died. We found him sitting in his favorite armchair. At least he got his wish to be buried in his homeland. The years and the war 
had worn him out. The last of our trees got back in 1951. Being away from home made us even more aware that we were different. And the strength of spirit and determination to survive made us what we are today. The evacuation was not to be the end of us. It was to be the making of us. The birth of the Gibraltarian. y el calor de otro amor, de otro amor que me hiciera sentir, que me hiciera feliz como ayer lo fui, ¿quién será la que me quiere?